some people think histology is boring. And that's because it is. Apologies to all histopathologists I've just offended, but just because it's boring doesn't make it unimportant. Far from it. Think of it a bit like doing your tax returns. There are consequences for failure to do it correctly. You need to know basic skin histology as well as the back of your hand. <gasps> What's that? Because dermoscopy is the art of decoding histology without resorting to a knife and the skills of histopathologists. Let's start with the basement membrane. This is our compass because everything you see through a dermoscope is orientated around it. Not only is it less than the width of a hair, its shape varies across the human body and has a major impact on what you see on dermoscopy. The basic shape is a wavy line like this. Because of this, we get a pigment network pattern when pigment follows that basement membrane. Think of the shape of the basement membrane being similar to that of an egg tray. When viewed from above, the concentrate of the pigment is greater on the down slopes of the retro ridges, giving it a darker colour when compared to the flatter areas at the top of the papillary dermis. This shape increases the surface area of contact between the dermis and the overlying epidermis for the diffusion of nutrients to keep the epidermis alive, as well as increasing the adhesion of the epidermis to the underlying dermis. We don't want that epidermis slipping off now, do we? On the face, this basement membrane is flat, and on glabrous skin, the fissures and ridges are very close together, giving rise to fingerprints, among other things. Therefore, you need to learn not one style of dermoscopy, but actually three. Remember, you can't just move your dermoscope around a patient's body without understanding the type of skin you're looking at. The epidermis is composed mainly of keratinocytes, called that because the main structural protein they produce is keratin. The life story starts at the basement membrane, where basal keratinocytes are active, every third cell in the process of dividing. This produces a column of cells pushed up into the epidermis and slowly changing as they make their way up the escalator of cells to end up being discharged from the surface as dust. This process normally takes between 20 to 40 days. Apart from the top stratum corneal layer, all the cells in the epidermis are alive with a nucleus of DNA that is exposed to the sun's damaging ultraviolet radiation. This puts them at risk of mutations causing cancer. A sun hat, sun cream, clothing or a house all work fine, but we also are equipped with inbuilt sun protection produced by melanocytes cells. Cause that because they produce ultraviolet light blocking pigment melanin. Whatever your skin colour, we all have the same number of melanocytes which live on the basement membrane between the basal keratinocytes at a ratio of 1 melanocyte to 10 basal keratinocytes and approximately 2,000 melanocytes per 1 millimetre square of skin. Our different shades of skin colour is due to how active these cells are at producing packets of melanin, which they transfer into keratinocytes as they ascend to the skin surface. Exactly how they do this is open debate, but they use what are called dendrils or arms each melanocyte producing a supply of melanin to around 35 surrounding keratinocytes. Over millennium, people in northern latitudes reduced their ability to produce so much melanin due to the need for vital amine D or vitamin D produced within the skin. Without vitamin D, children get rickets and bone deformities, and women are therefore more likely to die in childbirth from pelvic bony abnormalities, among other things. It seems vitamin D production is more important to reproduction than avoiding skin cancer later on in life. The capillary blood vessels feeding the epidermis runs underneath the basement membrane. There should be no blood vessels within the epidermis itself. These capillaries loop up within each papillary dermis and when viewed from above, they look like a red dot if viewed end on, or like a hairpin if viewed horizontal to the skin surface. The main protein in the dermis is collagen produced by fibroblast cells. This is a key structural protein throughout the body. When skin needs to repair itself, fibroblasts produce new collagen, making this repair possible. However, collagen can also be altered in other skin pathologies, including cancers. These bundles of collagen are visible under polarised light only because they are in the papillary dermis and therefore too deep to be visualised using non-polarised light. These are one type of shiny white structure seen on dermoscopy that provides us with clues to decoding what's going on in the skin. Skin has what are called adnexal appendages, which comprise hair follicles with their sebaceous glands, sweat and apocrine glands. Hair follicles also have their own melanocytes, their degree of activity giving us our hair colour. These adnexal appendages open onto the skin surface and show up in various ways, giving us vital clues to the diagnosis. The skin, being a good source of protein, is sometimes infested with scabies mite, dermoscopy being an excellent way to identify them in their burrows. Let me add to this summary diagram the most common skin lesions you will see in primary care. My other videos cover all of these and their dermoscopy in more detail. There, that wasn't so bad, was it? Right, just enough time to get a pint in the local pub. See you there. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.